Hello and welcome to part two of How to Ride Horses, the complete beginner's guide to horse riding and horse care. Today we're going to talk about grooming. How to Ride Horses part two, grooming the horse. Horses generally like to be groomed. We groom horses for several reasons. One of them is to make him look smart. The other reason is to clean the areas where the saddle and the bridle are going so that any dirt or mud don't get caught under the leather and irritate the horse. When we're grooming the horse, it's best not to... Notice the horse untying his rope. I usually tie this horse to his head collar, but I thought it would look neater for the film to just tie him to the ring. He soon found the knot. wear gloves so that you can feel if there is any heat anywhere on the horse which could indicate that there is a problem. I tied him back up but he immediately undid himself without me noticing. Cheeky boy. You're also looking for any cuts or injuries that your horse may have sustained since the last time you saw him. Grooming is also a form of massage. Horses can be groomed before they're ridden and after they're ridden to increase the circulation in the muscles. When horses were working animals, they used to be groomed for about half an hour before they were worked and about an hour after they were worked because grooming is a form of massage for the muscles. There are several brushes that you can use to groom your horse or pony. We're going to use most of them today. When you visit your tack shop, you will see a great array of things that you can use to smarten up your horse for a show. There's all kinds of sprays and different types of brushes that you can use. Today, we're just going to use standard brushes. This is a dandy brush. This brush is good for getting dried mud and dirt out of your horse's coat. It's got long, stiff bristles. These bristles might irritate some horses if you use them on the legs and the face. So it's better not to use this brush on some horses' legs and face, unless the horses don't mind. In England, we have very thick-skinned and rough-haired ponies, and they don't mind this brush. But some horses and ponies have got finer skin with shorter hair, and they don't like these bristles. To groom your horse, stand in the centre of his body. You can put the hand nearest his body on his back to stabilise yourself and also give him comfort. Starting off on his neck, brush firmly, following the line of the hair. This is a dandy brush. This horse does not mind this brush being used on his legs. Some horses would mind and then you'd use the body brush, which is a softer brush. I'm using this brush first because the horse has got dirt on him from the field. When you want to brush his hindquarters, Turn and put the brush in the opposite hand. This way you can brush all the horse without having to get behind him. It also means that you can lean into the brush and put more pressure on. When grooming his hind legs, you can hold on to his tail if you want to, or keep your hand on his back. Never kneel down around horses. You can crouch, but never kneel, that's dangerous. When grooming his hind legs, remember to groom the inside of the other leg. Remember to groom especially well where the saddle and the girth are going. 
so that there's no dirt that will get trapped underneath the saddle or the girth to irritate your horse. This is a body brush. In America, it's also called a face brush. It's got short, soft bristles. This brush is good for getting dust and grease out of your horse's coat. So for horses that are kept in the field all the time, it's better not to use the body brush too much or it will take too much grease out of his coat and he needs the grease to keep him dry when it's raining. And this brush is good for using on horses' faces. This is a curry comb. You can get curry combs in all kinds of colours, as you can with the other brushes. This curry comb is made out of plastic, it has a handle and stiffish uh, plastic bristles on the back. I like this brush for getting the dirt out of my horse's coat when they come in from the field. If your horse has come out of the field and is wet and muddy, it's best not to brush the wet mud because then you can push the dirt into his skin. If your horse is wet and muddy, it's better to use a sponge and sponge away the wet and the mud away from where the saddle and the girth and the bridle are going so that the mud doesn't irritate the horse's skin. <clears throat> I like using this plastic curry comb on my horse when he has a winter coat and he has got dried mud in, in his coat. It's very good for getting dried mud off. This horse has got his summer coat on and he isn't very muddy. I'm just using the brush to show you. I wouldn't use this brush on his legs because he wouldn't like the stiff bristles and I wouldn't use it on his face. This is a rubber curry comb. The rubber curry comb can be used on the horse or it can be used to clean the body brush. It has rubber nodules on the back. It's best not to use the rubber curry comb on the horse's face or legs or it may irritate him. There's also a metal curry comb. This has got metal spikes and this can be used to clean the body brush but it isn't to be used on the horse's skin. You clean the body brush by scraping it across one of the curry combs. There's three types of curry comb. The plastic curry comb, the rubber curry comb and the metal curry comb. Today we're going to use the rubber curry comb. It's very useful because it can be used to clean the body brush like this. Or it can be used in a circular motion on the horse's body to bring up the dust which we then brush away with the body brush. To get the dust out of the horse's coat, if he's got a summer coat, we can use a circular motion with the rubber curry comb and then brush off the dust with the body brush. gets dust inside it, tap it on the floor to remove the dust. Where the hair grows in funny directions, follow the line of the hair. horses are ticklish. They are ticklish here, just behind the elbow, and they can be ticklish under the tummy. If you're grooming a ticklish horse, use a soft brush 
and be careful. Horses can also be ticklish in other areas, inside the hind legs and around the ears, for instance. Your horse will let you know where his ticklish bits are, but the horse has to be groomed. So just grooming with a soft brush. Body brushes are good for brushing horses' legs because they're nice and soft, and as the legs are bony, the soft bristles don't irritate them. We can use the body brush on the horse's face. You can brush his face while he's tied up like this, or if he's a nice quiet horse, you could undo the head collar. Brush carefully round his eyes. This is a mane comb. You can use this comb to comb through the horse's mane before you plait it. This is a special kind of mane and tail brush. It's good for getting tangles out of your horse's mane and tail. This horse's mane grows on the off side of his neck. Some horses have manes that grow on this side of the neck. Some people only like their horse's manes and tails being brushed with a body brush. <clears throat> Some people who own horses with very thick manes and tails like to use a dandy brush. Some horse owners only like their horses manes and tails to be detangled using the fingers. To make a thorough job of grooming your horse's mane you would bring it over to the other side of his neck groom the underneath of it as I'm doing here and then flick it back over his neck go around the other side of the horse and groom it from that side This is a hoof pick. It has a hook at one end and I like this one because it has a brush so that you can brush the debris out of the horse's foot after you've cleaned it. Some hoof picks just have the hook. To pick up your horse's front foot, put your hand on his shoulder, run your hand down his shoulder, down his leg and pick up his foot.
If you're going to a show or you want your pony to look really special, you can do these finishing touches. You can damp your body brush with water by dipping it into some water and shaking the drops off or you can use a specialist water brush. So shake the water off and then Smooth the top of the horse's mane and also smooth the top of his tail. That will make your pony look really smart. This is hoof oil. Hoof oil can be put on your horse's feet to make them look shiny for a show and also it may be recommended by a farrier to keep your horse's hooves in good condition. This is a sponge. If you like, you can have several sponges. One for the horse's eyes, one for his nostrils, and one for his dock. It's a good idea if they're different colours and then you don't get them mixed up. It's very important if you use sponges to keep them very clean. You can also polish your pony and get rid of the surface dust with a stable rubber. All it is is a damp cloth, like a damp tea towel. Just fold it and then use that over the horse's coat to get rid of the surface dust. And this will give them a nice polish. This is a sweat scraper. You get plastic sweat scrapers like this and metal sweat scrapers. There is a soft rubber squeegee along one side and this is what you use to scrape along the horse to get rid of excess water. If you've been riding your horse and he's got sweaty, it's a good idea to wash off the sweat and then scrape off the excess water with this rubber squeegee. Or if you've washed your horse before a show, again, this rubber squeegee can be used to get excess water off his body. You'd wash all the sweat off and then you would squeegee the horse. <laughs>
the horse from the stable, first collect your head collar and lead rope. Hold them safely. Don't walk along with the lead rope dangling on the floor where it can get caught in your feet. So hold the lead rope safely and hold the head collar by the nose band. Okay? Walk to the pony stable, back, back. If the horse has got his head over the door like this one, make him go back. Just talk to him and say, back up. If the horse has got his bottom to the door, don't be patting his bottom because you'll make him jump. But talk to him instead and maybe rap on the door to make him wake up, pay attention, and then turn around and face you. This door has got a kick bolt. So I undo the kick bolt with my foot. Open the lock. Come in the stable. And bolt the door. Back. Make the horse back up to be safe. Put the lead rope around his neck. And then put the nose band of the head collar. over his nose and flick the headpiece over his head. Buckle up the headpiece. This rope has got a spring clip. Make the spring clip point away from the horse's head. So you fasten it here with the spring away from the horse's head. Hold the horse, hold the loose end, undo the door. With doors be very, very careful, open them right up, okay? So we'll open this door right back. Holding the loose end of the rope in your left hand, walk up, walk through the middle of the door, the horse will walk through the middle of the door, okay, don't get squished by the horse in the doorway, you walk through first in the middle and the horse will walk in the middle, then you can walk at the side of him, come on, come on. To bring a horse back to the stable, Make sure that the door is opened very wide and go through the stable door first with the horse following. So I'm going first through the middle. The door, the horse follows. Turn. Come back to the stable door and shut it. Catch it too. Undo the horse's head collar. Bolt the top bolt. If it's got a bottom bolt, ensure that is fastened too.